Welcome to Buffalo After Dark, everybody. It's your Wednesday night uncensored, unfiltered, and unafraid sports show. You still up? This episode of Buffalo After Dark starts now. Welcome to Buffalo After Dark, everybody. It is Wednesday night, May 3rd, and of course, you got both Robs here <laughs> first. <laughs> Hanson, how's it going? <laughs> Uh, Rob, you go first, mate. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm doing good. Not yet. Got my new phone finally. Oh, that's good. And, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. And you know what? I'm doing good as well. Except the only thing I'm doing tonight is eating this fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Fucking yep. So anyone who has watched over the last couple of weeks, we both had the bet at number 27. We both lost. So yes, I have my, my bowl of Vindaloo too. So uh, we're just going to get it out of the damn way. So, um, well, But before we go ahead and we eat up and we put ourselves through some, some fucking misery here, uh, you can give us a call 929-205-6099 or you can and, uh, jump on the Facebook chat at our Horns and Herbs Entertainment site. So, that being said, um, do you want the honors or do you want me to dig in first? Well, I'm going to open the box because go I've been it. because I've been saying to you before the show I didn't want to open it until like we go on air because I didn't want the food to get cold. Okay. All right. Let me just yeah. get the drip. That's it mine's in only this. been open a few minutes, so. Yeah. Okay. Let me put this. So. Yeah, this yeah. is very greasy, surprisingly. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's see what uh let's see what uh yours is like. <laughs> okay. I can smell the spice. I can smell it coming through. Holy so, shit. Just to give you an idea of what they throw in there, it depends on the place, but it could be jalapenos, it could be uh Calabrian chilies, it could be a, it could be a ghost reaper, it could be a maruga, <laughs> it could be uh Anything and whatever they decide to throw on, it just depends on the place. Unfortunately, there's no yeah. way that we could tell. But, but I want to yeah. say, um, you know, here locally, you got mine from Shalimar, which is a newer place that opened up in Williamsville. So, uh, you know, yeah. good service, good food. So, yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, definitely a shout out. So they gave me a case of naan, which I ordered anyway, because mm -hmm. Tom's like, quote unquote, make sure you get some carbs before you eat this because it will fuck up your stomach. So I'm like, yep. okay. <laughs> and then they were also nice enough to throw me in a bowl of rice. Yeah. Which was and they, and they did that on mine also. So I've got my um, so I got my garlic naan. I've got my rice here. So, so that's what it yep. is. But and yeah, course, unfortunately, <laughs> we don't know how hot it's gonna be until you actually have it. Well, let me open this. So if I need to desperately get open for a drink, it's right there for the making. There you go. Fucking hell. There and Burnus go. is a good thing to have because it's so bubbly and fizzy mm -hmm. that it actually might help with an adjustment of the system. So Right, right. I got so, my fork and knife. So I will tell Milk you. Milk would also you. work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck me. Or maybe uh, like a bottle of Pepto afterwards. <laughs> that too, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I got my fork and I'm ready to go. Yep. So I did. I did give uh, Bobby a couple hints on this stuff like uh, beforehand today because it's his first time eating this stuff. I've had this before, so so it's one of those. But yeah, if you want to go into it, man, feel free. I'll All give right, you the first honors. Okay. And we did get... agree to one thing too. If um, if he can't handle the heat, he doesn't have to down the entire thing. So. There it there is, you boys. Go, man. This is lamb, by the way. Okay. Yeah, mine's chicken. Nice. All right. Ready? <laughs> yep. Bottoms up. Cheers. Bottoms up, man. Ready? One, two, three, go. Mm. What do you think? So Holy far? fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> they make yours like extra hot or something. <laughs> Holy is he shit. already turning red? <laughs> Holy, Holy shit, your face is like purple. <laughs> yeah. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. I'm hungry, but fuck, I can't stop eating. Holy shit. Oh, this is, this is great. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> What's it taste like, ma'am? <laughs> It tastes like spicy lamb. Okay. Imagine putting a lamb all chopped up from the lambs into a hot oven 
and you put that fucker in through, all around with like different types of like sauces, like Carolina Reaper and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm -hmm. Holy fuck! <laughs> I wasn't hey. kidding, man. That that shit's hot. <laughs> well, a deal is a deal. Yep. What? Fuck. Oh uh, yeah, I'll get it to you after the um, podcast is done. I know where it is though. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. I know yeah. with mine is I did find out what they throw in mine, but. Um, it's like a mix of, um, they do throw a Reaper, a Calabrian chili, and some jalapenos in it. Jeez, they really spice it up. Mm hmm Why not, you know? Fuck. They also put potatoes in here. Yep. Yeah, they did in mine, too. But, it's good stuff. I mean, I, I really like, like, how this place turned out. Fuck, dude. Yeah. Eat some of the naan if you need to, man. If you need some of the bread to help, like, kill the heat. Yeah. I'll figure it out soon, mm -hmm. but it's like it's like dug in here deep. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find the meat. Fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah, one of the things Vindaloo is like one of the hottest curries that you can ever get. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that's hotter is that um fall over at Brick Lane in New York City where they throw like ten different types of chilies in it. You knew damn well I was not willing to do that. Go all the way to New York City just for a order dish of Vindaloo. Yeah. No way. Well, then after the fact, what happens is that they basically said they've had people like hallucinate and pass out in the place before <laughs> with eating the fall. So that's more of like a dare curry. Mm-hmm. Well. God, I'm an idiot. Why did I even think this was a good idea? <laughs> Fuck. Because you love me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's why, you man. Me too. Yeah. Well, that's why I said if I lose, I don't give a shit. I'll eat this stuff anyways. <laughs> so, or if I won, I wouldn't care. I'd just do it. I'm gonna oh. go the extreme. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, I'm you're different. doing it on the non. Okay. Yeah, I've done that before. Mm. This is actually really good. So, I all right. Say, it tastes any like um tastes like any um. Uh, reapers or maruga peppers in there? Yeah, there's a lot of <coughs> reaper peppers in here for sure. There you go. Yeah. Just be glad they probably, well, just be glad it's not the fall where they throw pepper X in it, which is like the hottest thing on earth. Oof. Tell me about it. it robs you sitting pepper. Here. It's like 4 million Scovilles on its own. And tell me about it. And Rob's just sitting here like, I can't wait. I'm actually watching somebody burn their mouth open. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, although watch it's quality like, entertainment. Yeah, but watch, Crazy. man, it's like all that heat. It like it acts like Fuck. histamine, so you'll probably pass out. It's like eating. It's like having Benadryl. You know what? Based on me with eating this, I might have explosive diarrhea. <laughs> Just make sure your wife doesn't go in the bathroom anytime soon. So, <laughs> yeah, dude, your face is like really purple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's insane. <laughs> yeah, mine hasn't even changed color, really. <laughs> but but I am used to eating this stuff, though, because I have had it before. Well, at the same time, I'm also working outside a lot, so... Oh, right. And your so dumbass didn't put like... sunblock on. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> because the weather was so awkward these last couple of days. Because it was, like, in the mid-40s and the early mm -hmm. 50s. And then today was, like, in the early 50s to the mid-60s. Mm -hmm. Very weird weather. Yeah, but it's like Mark Luther. Yeah, but man, I'll give you credit, man. You haven't quit on that yet. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm a little queer. There you go. Good stuff. I don't. I don't quit. All right. Yeah, and that's why pretty much, you know, we're doing this like at our own risk. So <laughs> basically, if one of us dies <laughs> eating this stuff, uh, no one's responsible except ourselves. <laughs> You're going to my you're you going go. to my funeral. Rob's going to be my interpreter, and Tom's mm -hmm. going to be going to my funeral. Yeah, both like the ball bearers or something. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> you're hurting, man. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? Is that hotter than that um, de bomb beyond insanity? I wouldn't say it's as hot, but it's it's up there. Well, what it does too is like it's it's funny because when you eat that, it like builds. It's not like all right away either. Yeah, I mean it's not, it's not as bad as the bomb. Be honest, because the bomb itself is literally 
It's literally mm-hmm. like, what's it called? It's literally like the taste in it is awful, mm-hmm. but the spices that added to it is what makes it like get its killer, right? You know, intense spice, whatever. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, don't add any of that stuff to what you're eating because that's gonna make it like really beyond hell on earth for you. Well, I'm already in hell, so you may as well just embrace it, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly, man. Yeah, but but I'll tell you, I mean, I'm you know, I'm glad this stuff turned out really good. I'm happy about it. Oh well, yeah, I don't blame you. So I, I mean, like I said. It's hot, but it's not as hot as the bomb beyond its ending. But it's definitely up there. Oh, and the Devils finally score. There you go. What's oh, the score? It's about time. Fuck. You're down two goals. So it's three. And you cannot be. Mm. Fuck. All right. So yeah, we'll do. We'll kind of munch on this throughout the show, but. We figured, hey, that's a good good 15-minute opening right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Watching this kill ourselves. Well, actually, this is gonna more be like in the watching top Bobby funniest kill himself. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be called Bobby's Suicide Mission in the top five funniest moments of season three. Yeah, it definitely will be on there. <laughs> Dude, your reaction when you first bit it and stuff, you're like, holy fuck. <laughs> that was priceless. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my fucking lord. <laughs> What would, what would you say? Is that one of the hottest things you've ever eaten? Definitely in the top 15. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. uh, and believe me, I ain't no bitch. Right. I ain't no bitch. I'm just gonna keep pushing forward. So, so while we're eating this shit... <laughs> Let's go on with our first topic of the show. Mm-hmm. Tom Lee, the guy. The NHL playoffs. And who would have thought we would have seen the upsets that we saw this past week? Because first, oh, and I got to laugh at this one so much. I did too. Who would have thought the Boston Bruins, after winning 65 games, would have been Florida's bitch? <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Like, like dude, literally. <clears throat> Sounds like it's clearing your sinuses out now, too. <laughs> Yeah, it, does. <laughs> it actually benefits me because I had a seriously. I, I said this. <laughs> it was I say, hope that acid don't come back up. <laughs> yeah, for real. That'll hurt you. That'll like kill your throat for a while. <laughs> Excuse me. God damn, was mm. That is not manly of me. Anyway, <clears throat> what I was trying to say was we're not ready to show. Who gives a shit? <laughs> how the how the fuck did the devil? Uh, how did the Panthers beat the Bruins? I don't have a clue. But what's even more embarrassing is everything the Bruins fought for all year long means nothing. Yeah. And watch, that could have been Bergeron's last. Also could sure have been seen. Yeah. I have to say, on that last goal, though, how was so out of position? Seriously. You have uh, just a uh, standard goal to set the time. Absolutely Nothing like for Boston. Another problem, too, is they were not passing the puck well all series long, especially in game six and seven. Yeah. And defensively, they didn't look good, especially in game seven. I, I, I still, right now, I know it's like almost a week old and it's like a few days old, but I still cannot get over the fact that the Boston Bruins, of all, <clears throat> of all James, fuck. <laughs> Of all teams, <laughs> had a 65 regular season record. Record, I can't talk. Was it 65, 12, or 65, 12, and five? Yeah, 65 total wins and 12 regulation losses and five overtime losses, and all, all that to do nothing. And once again, if you remember last week, on the show, I said, "Don't be surprised if the Bruins." Not to the first round, but eventually they would choke in the second round or third mm-hmm. round. But of all of us in this room, how many of us have predicted the Panthers to beat the Bruins? Yeah, nobody. Nobody. I was thinking I think actually, only... Boston, I was thinking Boston in five, honestly. Yeah, and you were very. I think that's what I had too. Yeah, I had them in five as well. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. embarrassing. If I'm a if I'm a Boston Bruins fan, that is a 
That is fucking embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I would just blow up the core if I'm being completely honest. That it might come to that, quite honestly, the way they're going. I mean, they might have to, and they might not even have any options right now. I mean, yes, there are a lot of good things that they did, but to lose to the Florida Panthers, who barely made the playoffs, Yikes. something's wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, and you know what's funny, too? Of all the teams that won the President's Trophy since 2014, mm -hmm. the Bruins have won this trophy three times, and they have not gone past anywhere near their expectations. Yeah, they lost in the second round of Montreal. They lost in the Stanley Cup Finals in 2019 to St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, in 2020, they won the President's Trophy. They lost in the second round to Carolina. And then this year, they lost in the first fucking round to the fucking Panthers. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. embarrassing. Oh, yeah. And then another one that's embarrassing. How about Tampa and Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> Toronto just like literally came out of nowhere and took it in seven. Yeah, it's so ironic. But I want to finish up with Boston because there's so many things <laughs> that I thought about them that mm -hmm. this is going to lead to some problems in the future. One being, right, the Bruins are going to be <laughs> fuck. <laughs> it's still well, messing with you pretty good, ain't it? <laughs> yeah, it no is. shit. <laughs> no shit. Um, 4.5 million in cap penalties due to performance bonuses over ranges. Mm -hmm. and Gonzaga's extensions kick in, which is $5.8 million or more this coming year. And the Bruins will roughly have $6.5 million in cap space <clears throat> with nine roster spots opening. And then no Orlov or Bertuzzi are going to be on the team next season because they're both likely free agents due to cap. Yep. Jeremy Swayman could easily be taken away off the run offer sheet. Yeah, imagine that. And they also have one selection, count that, one selection in the top 64 in the first three drafts and the most high and the most high goals against average contracts, or I'm sorry, annual average value contracts are immovable due to no movement clauses. Oh, God, that's brutal. So the Boston Bruins are going to be in limbo. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I've told this to a few Ooh, of my coworkers. My the Boston that. Bruins, what they accomplished this year, outside of getting knocked out in the first round, mm -hmm. means absolutely nothing. And even if another team does win 65 games, we will never see anything like this ever again. I don't doubt it. I'm just saying it as it is. And you know what? Good riddance to those fucking assholes. Because the Bruins have been tormenting us for 15 years. Mm-hmm. Yep. Long enough. <laughs> so, it reminds me of that time when the New England Patriots totally like had that undefeated season and they lose in like the first round. <laughs> yeah, and that was great. Yeah. This shit hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, but we'll move on to Tampa and uh Toronto and oh my god, Toronto, I didn't even think that they would pull it out of the first round, but they did. They found a way to beat Toronto. Uh, they found a way to beat Tampa. Well, I think Rob has a lot to say about this. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I mean, the way the season ended for Tampa, I figured Toronto would have a shot at finally winning a series. A uh, just series. the way... A, yeah, a series. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But just the way uh, Vasilevsky played and how abysmal the defense was, I just, I just had a feeling Tampa wasn't going to go far. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And what was it that you were bitching about at the deadline about the Lightning when they got Tanner Janelle? Oh, uh, aside from uh, the amount of draft picks they gave up for him, they, uh, I thought they'd get a defenseman, but nope. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think you also said at one point that because of how Tampa banked it on, their, on Janelle, they gave up an unnecessary amount of draft picks. And you also said that they didn't get enough depth Right, exactly. Yeah, because I remember you saying something like that a few months ago, like at the deadline. You were like, Tampa didn't get enough assets to, you know, fill the void when they need it, especially when, you know, the core is getting older and, oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the core, as a whole, is getting older and they they don't have any depth. Because Tampa, like Boston, is just throwing away assets like candy. They have three picks in this year's draft, a sixth and two sevenths. Yeah. Wait, three? That's it? Yep. Just three. <laughs> Just three. <laughs> Just three draft picks, and they're all really late. Holy shit. 
Wow, that's not man like of me. Oh Fuck. man, you're good. You're hurting, man. That's like that's like literally. I can tell you are like really hurting eating that stuff. He really is. <laughs> Should I just stop? <laughs> I mean, hey, if you're that, hungry, you're hungry. That's up but... to you, ma'am. I. I mean, if you want to down it, go ahead and down it. If you if you don't want to, then don't. <laughs> I think there's more meat in here than there are potatoes. Mm -hmm. But well, that's a good thing because you're paying. You should be paying for meat and not potatoes. Mm hmm. Yeah, for real. Fuck. But yeah, <laughs> you want to talk about another team that felt like ass in the playoffs? How oh, about yeah. the New York Rangers? Yes. <laughs> oh, that was oh, an epic fail. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Mm hmm. And Mr. Devil's fan here, tell us your impressions. Yeah, I didn't expect the Devils to play that well after games one and two. And who would have thought Schmidt would be the guy to steal the series? But they just, that team just does not quit at all. Despite having not a lot of playoff experience, the fact that they were able to just. Turn it around and beat the Rangers is amazing. Yeah. And you know what? I said it all year. I even said it to you, Rob and Tom. I said it to y'all that once the Rangers got Patrick Kane, I said the Rangers are a bunch of frauds. Mm -hmm. You did say that. And then another series we could look at, how about Dallas and Minnesota? That, that was a good one to watch. <laughs> yep, that was entertaining for sure. Yeah. I kind of expected it. Like I wanted Minnesota to win it at seven, but I figured after the, game, uh, the way they played in Game Six, I felt like the Wild had no shot afterwards. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, although it, I will say this, it did clear my sinuses a little while ago. So. Yeah, mine is just getting worse over time. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. And the thing is, that heat just keeps building up. <laughs> yeah. And again, That's why I told you, eat the non bread. It'll help counteract that. Either there or drink milk. I don't have milk. Sucks to be you, then. I am. Mm -hmm. You know why I don't have milk? Because why do you keep drinking all the fucking milk for coffee? <laughs> hey, you already knew about this ahead of time. You could have walked your ass to the store before the show started. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I may be hurt now, but I ain't dying. It's gonna hurt more coming hurt. out of your ass later. <laughs> Fucking hell! It'd probably be like flames coming out. But, but then another series that got really interesting towards the end. How about Seattle and Colorado? Because <laughs> I know that Andy was, was not happy that. with that series. Who that saw was... that coming? <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought Grubauer would have like bailed out the crack in the way he did? And then last night, who would have thought that he would have bailed him out like towards the end of the first overtime? In Dallas, yeah. Oh I don't my know how god! <laughs> oh yeah, Can I missed that game last about... night. I was going to say, can we talk about the fact that Joe Pavelski is now the oldest player in NHL history to score four playoff goals in one game? Yeah. Don't it, let Sharks fans hear that. <laughs> yeah. He was on fire last night. But how about that fourth goal when he had that wicked tip where he had his stick leg still below the crossbar? That's oh what he's good at. Yeah. That was just great to see. But I'll tell you, though, Yanni Gord made it hell for everybody last night. Yeah, I, I, still, right. I, I still miss him on Tampa, but glad he's uh, finding success in Seattle. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's playing well, and he was making it brutal for Colorado, too. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Because <laughs> I am an idiot. Do bed with this fuck one. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I've eaten this stuff before. It doesn't phase me that much. My feelings hurt. <laughs> 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 oh I, I can tell it's like your face is probably like hotter than hell right now <laughs> yeah if you were like, to use one of those infrared thermometers you'd probably be over 100 degrees at this point at this point I'd probably be over 200 <laughs> oh jeez oh, mm. yeah but I'm all out of pop fuck yeah <laughs> but no what, what I will say though it's um 
you know, great first round with like what we got to see. And actually what I wanted to do is jump into um, the round two predictions and uh, we'll do that before we go to the break. But, um, or we could do, since we're only like up in like two minutes, we could do that after a break and that way we're not rushing it. <laughs> well, it's up to you because I'm burning my fucking face here. <laughs> you probably need the break. <laughs> <laughs> you probably need the break. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. But. Well, what about Edmonton in L.A.? You forgot to mention that. Mm. Yeah, let's talk about that beforehand. Well, I want, Well, I knew Edmonton was going to win the series, although I really wanted the Kings to win. Mm -hmm. Right. I did have the Kings in seven. And I was thinking yeah. the Kings would take it just because of the fact that, I mean, other than McJesus and uh, Dreisaitl, I mean, there really isn't a whole ton there, and especially their goaltending is a question mark. Yeah. With what, Skinner? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? He may be a rookie goalie, but he, <coughs> he's definitely better than Jack Campbell, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And Jack Campbell's sitting on the bench for 5 to $6 million to do nothing. Yeah, Must that is nice. pretty pathetic. <laughs> well... I think, to be fair, they'd be a mediocre team without McDavid or Dreisaitl. Oh, they wouldn't even be close. Oh, no, not at all. They'd be like one of the bottom feeders out west. And you know what? We'll see what happens because, again, if the Boston Bruins can get, <coughs> if the Boston Bruins can get eliminated from the playoffs, we'll see what happens with the Edmonton Oilers because everybody's predicting them to win the Cup this year. Mm -hmm. Well, we will see. I mean, but I would say <coughs> out west, Depending if Edmonton gets gets through um, this round, and if Seattle gets past Dallas, um, I would not be surprised if Seattle goes even further. I honestly would not be surprised. They are on fire right now. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a Florida Seattle Stanley Cup final. Oh, I would love to watch that. I would not be surprised. And the most ironic thing is, is you can't call, and you can't say shit about this either because I did say New Jersey and Vegas in the Stanley Cup finals, and everybody's like, "Yeah, you're mm -hmm. bluffing." And now look at me. Who's on top now, bitches? Yeah, you might be on to something there. <laughs> yeah. Very well. Could be if Vegas keeps playing the way they are. I mean, they could, they very much have a, have a team that they could go all the way for that. So. Yeah, for sure. Depends. They're one of the tougher teams out West. They've been ever since they came in the league, except last year. Right. Well, last year, they were really banged up with injuries. Well, Fuck! Right. They were... <laughs> <laughs> This isn't gonna get old. This is awesome. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Fucking assholes. <laughs> I'm guessing you would have rather given up the hundred bucks, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, I'd rather have a buffalo shit on my face than eat this thing. Oh, God. <laughs> well, I'd rather put my bath in a crocodile's mouth while shoving my head up a unicorn's asshole. <laughs> that, that's how bad this is. Fuck! What has it been doing? Just the heat keeps building up and up? <laughs> yeah, most likely. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. It's really just getting worse as time goes on. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, man. No more meat. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. How did I eat all that meat? <laughs> Hey, do you still have the curry sauce in there? You could always mix the rice in it. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I won't I'm give good. you credit, man. You did clean it out. <laughs> yep. Mm. And you know what? I stood by the bet, too. Yep, you do. Now, I did finish up the meat earlier, so now I just threw some rice in here just to finish it all off. <laughs> so There you go. Mix it all in, man. Making sure that yeah. it's like, completely cleaned out, but... But it is what it is. So, mm -hmm. we'll do. <laughs> Since we're up at the ha at, at the halfway point, uh, we'll let Bobby uh, try to gain his composure back, and uh, we'll see you in about thirty seconds. <laughs> Fucking hell.
Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. This is okay. this is definitely a top five <laughs> moment. <laughs> oh for sure. <laughs> Right. I'm okay. <laughs> you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Buffalo After Dark, everybody. It's your Wednesday night uncensored, unfiltered, and unafraid sports show. You still up? This episode of Buffalo After Dark starts now. Welcome back to Buffalo After Dark. It is the second half of the show. If you want to jump on, 929-205-6099. Somehow Bobby's still alive after he started eating the Vindaloo curry, which was our bet. <laughs> Although Thanks his face is about six shades of uh, purple right now. <laughs> yeah, my face is also 50 shades of gray. <laughs> Are you starting to hallucinate eating that stuff? No, that that was just me and Joe. Mm. Yep. Yeah. So, to Bobby's credit, he did finish all the meat they had in there. I just have rice left in mine. I already finished it. I uh, finished uh, the meat. So, so that's that. You but, did offer me a way out, and I said no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so there you go. So he decided he took it like a man. <laughs> Actually, we both did. So. And his sinuses are all like completely all screwed up right now. <laughs> Actually, it cleared it out a while ago. <laughs> so, hmm? <laughs> Fuck. so and he and he's in quite a bit of pain right now, as he's been for like the last thirty-two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm also just stuffing my face with some non. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, Good old non. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we'll tell everyone where we got it. So, Bobby, what was the place you got your uh, curry at? I got this at a place called <clears throat> Karen Palace, which is in Massapequa or Hicksville. Okay, cool. Got mine at Shalimar up in Williamsville, just right outside of the Buffalo area. So it's um, you know, good stuff. Definitely stop in there and have some good authentic food, good people. So so with that, what we'll do, we'll jump right into it. 929 We actually uh, didn't get a chance to talk about this in the first half, but we'll cover it real quick. The Nassau Coliseum is going to see some changes. Yep. And uh, I took Rob to see the old Coliseum, but not the inside, unfortunately. But uh, <clears throat> Nassau County, uh, Nassau County uh, politicians and the executive county members there are going to be agreeing to a proposal that will turn the Coliseum into a casino resort that's privately funded. Interesting. And it's going to create job opportunities. Cool stuff. And well, a whole lot of traffic. Oh, yeah. I yeah, still, I, I still remember when we had the Swedish media incident in the Coliseum back in 2019. That was great. <laughs> I was actually just watching that video earlier today. Mm -hmm. The one where we had the Fire Housley sign that got confiscated, I think, like in the second period. And then people were saying, it's like, go back to Canada. Or they were loving the fact that we had the sign. And then that yeah. Swedish media check ended up uh, wanting to interview you. <laughs> yeah. Rob, have, awesome. ever, have you ever heard that story? Yes, yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember you sharing that. Yeah, plenty. I like, couldn't believe that happened. Like, no way this happened. Yeah, and then Harrington was all pissed off, and he had your sign on Twitter. <laughs> yep, yeah. and I got hated for it. Mm hmm. Yeah, and then the funny thing is, Housley got fired less than two weeks later. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, right there, man. Yeah, it was just on the bump pipe. <laughs> oh god, that's even worse. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be feeling that for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I will say this: at least you're not eating it later tonight because you don't want to fall asleep and have that happen because then you'll basically choke to death. Tom, if anything, you bought yourself another Vindaloo, and you'd probably do that later at like twelve thirty in the morning. And you're like, I'm gonna find a good way to go to sleep faster tonight. Nah. Let me just stuff my face with this shit. This stuff will probably knock me out fairly early, so <laughs> you know. Oh honestly, boy, three. <laughs> yeah, it'd probably be World War Three if we, if we actually ate that in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Ouch>. But, <laughs> but anyways, uh, just to let you know, games right now, Carolina is up three one on the Devils, and Edmonton and Vegas play later, so that's where we're at. But um, yep. 
but seeing that as it is, uh, we'll jump into some football because we do have some thoughts on the draft. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, one of the big stories that came out of Buffalo today is that uh, the new Bill Stadium uh, could be voted on as soon as tomorrow, and it could be approved. And if that happens, shovels will go in the ground this spring. Hell yeah. That's the way it should have been. Honestly, <clears throat> this stuff should have happened maybe like mid-April. Honestly, for them, they should have came to an agreement in March, but mm -hmm. better late than ever. Yeah, they had to let it go through the 30-day comment period, and apparently, I guess, there was no, like, major backlash or anything on it. So, um, as far as I know, uh, legislature's uh, going to vote on it tomorrow, and we could have a done deal and uh, ground breaks uh, this spring. So, be good to see. Yeah, man, it's only going to rebuild the stadium even faster within three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they're saying like 2026, like around that time. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. So, I mean, if you want to see games at Highmark, better go now or else uh, forever hold your peace. Yep. Yeah. And then let's talk about the draft because there were some very interesting moments that happened in that. Mm -hmm. Well, we have this fuckwad here with us to find that out. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Rob, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and then of course, as you guys know, we were live for the entire draft, which was I think like four and a half hours or something like that. But so let's do this. Why don't we review the original mock draft board that we pulled up and then compare it? That's what we should do. Yeah, let's talk about it. All right. So who do we have going first overall? C.J. Stroud. Yep. Yeah, he went number two overall to the Texans, and number one overall was Bryce Young. Yep. Yep. So it's kind of. I know Adam hates Bryce Young, but mm -hmm. rules are rules. Mm -hmm. like, you, you know, you draft a franchise guy and you hope in vain that it pans out. Um, number two, obviously, was the opposite way around, which was um, uh, CJ Anthony Stroud. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> yeah, CJ Stroud at number two to the Texans, but originally we said Anthony Richardson. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And then at number three, I said Will Anderson, which is ironic because he did go number three, but not to the Cardinals. He went to the freaking Texans in a trade. Yeah, there was a lot of trades in that in this draft, like especially the first and second insane. round compared to what we usually see. Yeah, most of the time. But you know what? It worked out, and teams got what they wanted at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is what led us to this whole bet I was thinking Jack Campbell at number 27. You were saying Osiris Torrance, which the Bills did end up with them at, later in the draft, but not at 27. And then you had one other player that you thought would go at possibly at 27, and that didn't happen either. Yeah, I said Zay Flowers, and that did not pan out. Right. But how about the biggest upset from the first round with the QB race? Yeah, Anthony Richardson at number four to the Colts. And that pick belonged to me and when I took Hendon Hooker. And obviously I was way off on that one. But I only wanted to do that to add the extra spark. Richardson was already gone by that point. <clears throat> so uh, what was I going to say? Richardson to the Colts is, I hope it works out for them, but I'm not sure if he'll pan out, if that makes any sense. Right. But then how about Will Levis like, falling way down in the draft? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I think we had him go to <clears throat> the Raiders at 7. Yeah, and he ended up going to the Titans <laughs> with the 33rd pick overall. Via trade with the Cardinals, which should have happened in the first round. And some people were even making comments saying that anybody who trades up in the first round to take Will Levis is a fucking moron. Mm -hmm. Well, how about the nepotism <laughs> pick, Joey Porter Jr. to the Steelers? Yep, Ugh. I know. Robbie's got a lot to say about this one. Uh, I hate it. Brother. Let it out. It's okay. Absolutely hate it. There were so many better players on the board. You could have had Branch right there at 32 and then gotten maybe another cornerback or something with the other second-round pick. But that other second-round pick, they screwed up on too. Yeah. I feel that was a reach. I don't even remember the guy's name, but I feel like he would have been available in the uh, later rounds. Yeah. I mean... Um... With the Bills, with what they did, um, they ended up moving up. So, of course, the Bills actually ended up trading. And they ended up um, – they wanted to leapfrog Dallas. And because Dallas wanted um, Dalton Kincaid, and, and actually we did a deal to jump ahead of them. So we actually moved up to 25. 
Jacksonville went down to 27. We gave up like nothing for that. It was like a fourth round pick. And we ended up grabbing Dalton Kincaid, who, I mean, there are some questions about the blocking, but the thing is, he's got a great set of hands and he gives us another weapon that we can potentially use. Yeah. There was even a, <clears throat> a post or a rumor going around, and I'll read you exactly what it said. And it was regarding oh, Dalton. By the Kincaid. way, Bobby, <laughs> fully cleaned out. <laughs> what do you want, a fucking trophy? <laughs> Yeah, my face didn't turn purple. Yeah, I know. Because you're used to it. Yeah. Uh, so hey, just, just be thankful I didn't make you do the fall curry. That would have yeah, been, like, yeah. really hell on earth. Yeah, really. <clears throat> so, according to the NFL Rookie Watch, uh, Josh Allen reportedly, quote, blew up Brandon Bean's phone with excitement after he found out the Bills were selecting Dalton Kincaid. And several NFL scouts and coaches reportedly believe that Kincaid's game has, quote, flashes of Travis Kelsey in it. And Brandon Bean said that he believes that Kincaid will pair well with Dawson Knox. Mm. Here's the thing about it. Two great tight ends, kind of like back in the day when Gronk was playing with the Patriots and he had Aaron Hernandez with them. Yeah. Before Aaron Hernandez killed all those people. Yeah. And a lot of Cowboys fans that I know personally were really pissed off, and they tried to deny it by saying, no, they weren't going after him anyway. Oh, and they God. went and got Mozzie Smith. Like, yeah, they needed to address the defense. That was a reach. <laughs> that was a mm-hmm. massive reach. But you know what, though? If we're talking about teams fucking over somebody, the Pittsburgh Steelers helped the New England Patriots fuck over the Jets. That yeah. was beautiful. That was great to see that. But how about how about the one of the biggest reaches to to close out the first round? The Chiefs ends up ends up uh, taking from K State <laughs> the edge rusher Felix Anadik Uzuma. I disagree with that. I think the biggest reach was Will McDonald the fourth to the Jets. That, that was a gun. that was a big reach. That too, yeah, yeah. yeah they a drafted a guy reach. who was projected to go no higher than the third round. All because the Steelers stole their off are their offensive linemen. Well, I also think it's because the Jets had no backup plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, like, too. it's like Dallas had no backup plan when they found out that we took uh, Kincaid and then they reached for Mozzie Smith and Jerry Jones was like literally like in that point where he had to be in like the PTSD or concussion protocol. I don't know what the fuck is going on over there. But as far as I know, uh, the Cowboys could have easily took Michael Meyer. They could have easily took him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But... But they chose not to, so that's their own incompetence. Yeah, and I told Cowboys, <laughs> and I told Cowboys fans, I'm telling you right now, you may say you may not want Kincaid, but you're going to regret the pick. I mm. guarantee you that. Yeah, and then even like seeing some of the air picks. I mean, um, some people were questioning the Atlanta Falcons taking Bijan Robinson at um, at number uh, eight. Yeah, I I kind of looked at that and I said, you know what, the Falcons. Didn't you forget about Brian Aguilar or Tyler Aguilar, you know, whatever his mm-hmm. name is? He, the guy that had over a thousand receiving yards or rushing yards last season. And also the Falcons take Bijan Robinson. And it's like, why do you need him? What's the purpose? Right. It, it just didn't make any sense. And, no. um, and then some people thought that the Lions taking Jack Campbell at 18 was a little bit um, out there, but he's actually. He's going to help that line out quite a bit, and it's actually going to strengthen up Detroit. It's just the only thing I'm thinking now is that Detroit still has some unanswered needs uh, after the draft. So, I mean, they're still going to have, have some stuff to do with, like, free agency, but um, but I don't have a problem with them taking them. I don't necessarily have a problem with uh, Skronsky going to Tennessee. I mean, that's going to mm-hmm. help that line be nastier. Uh, but it was actually interesting because in this draft, we actually had some picks that were right on. Um one of the ones that, that I had uh, JSN going at 20 to Seattle, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and the year before that, I had uh, <clears throat> I struck gold at four with Gardner to the Jets. Yep. This year, you took JSN to the Seahawks at 20. Yeah, great pickup for them. Great pickup for them. Yeah, I got to tell you, Seattle killed this draft. Same with Philadelphia. They did a oh, really nice Oh, God, night. Philly. Yeah, Philly, <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. God, that's like a, that's like the super team. Yeah, basically. The Georgia Bama Eagles. Yeah. Why, did the, why did the Eagles trade up one spot if they were going to take him regardless? Were the Bears, were they that nervous about the Bears taking the guy? Yeah, I don't know. That was, I don't, know. I don't think it was necessary, but. Yeah, I didn't think they'd have to, but 
But man, Philly killed it this draft. And then, of course, their their free agent signings to top it off. Well, Philly knows what they're doing, and that's the thing about Howie Roseman. Because Harry Roseman knows how to draft, and he knows how to sign players. Mm -hmm. And he knows how to trade well, too. You can thank New Orleans for this, too, because he's the one that basically said, all right, I'm going to trade with Miami, I'm going to trade with New Orleans, and I'm going to get as many assets as I can. And then look at them now. They got Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith, and they didn't have to do shit. Philly didn't need um, Jalen Carter, but they were just fortunate that their pick they got from the Saints was a top-10 pick. Yeah. Yeah. And that defense is going to be nasty this coming season. Hell yeah. Oh, and there's a possibility that we're going to likely see them this year. <laughs> yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about that now, actually, because uh, the fun thing is we still have about another 12 minutes, so we can actually go into this a little bit. So, of course, as you guys know, this past October, me and Bobby we and his wife, he, we went on the road trip to Kansas City. We stayed out there for almost a week. Uh, we got to visit St. Louis. We also got to do some different things in and around Kansas, Kansas City, both on the Kansas side and the Missouri side. Uh, we stuffed our face with good barbecue. Uh, we uh, drank a lot of beer <laughs> at Arrowhead. Uh, and we had we a got, great time tailgating with Chiefs fans. Yeah, yeah. And we got more beer from Buffalo fans that were there that, that saw us from the Plains. <laughs> so that was good. So Hell yeah. It was a fun time. That was a fun stadium, honestly. And I would say if anyone ever has a chance to go to Arrowhead, definitely take it and go there. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of Philadelphia or Cincinnati, guess who's coming with us this year? Yeah, this guy right here. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. There you Looking go. Looking forward to it. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? For me and Rob and Britt, it will only take us about an hour to two hours to get to Philadelphia. Meanwhile, it'll take Tom, maybe Adam. We're not 100%, but it'll take Tom like seven hours from Buffalo to Philadelphia yeah, by car. Yeah, driving there. Yeah, and, and, and also it would be the same case. If we end up in Cincinnati, it's about a seven-hour ride for me either way. So I'm kind of like right smack in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it's like 10 hours. Right, right. So, yeah, but... It really could go either way. Of course, the schedule's going to come out, and it'll be, I think, like May 11th is when it comes out. But it'll be interesting to figure out because, I mean, those are the two teams we definitely want to see. Um, I know some people in Philadelphia, which is pretty cool. Actually, uh, someone I work with is there, so that's awesome. And and then, um, you know, we'll just have to see how, how everything happens. Yeah, and uh, and this year, this year too, we're also getting an opportunity to see not only Joe Burrow but Jalen Hurts. Mm -hmm. So, so good QBs either way. I mean, it's going to be a, a fun matchup, whichever spot we end up with. So, yeah, we can't go wrong, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Now, here here would be the thing. From what I've heard, Geno's or Pats, neither of them are that good. Better off going to like Tony Luke's or somewhere else for a cheesesteak. I don't know dick about Philadelphia, like, areas and restaurants. I don't know dick about, like, Philly cheesesteak. Like, I, like I've like i had local Philly cheesesteaks. It's not the same as when you go to Philadelphia. That's well, for sure. Yeah, it really of isn't. Of course. And I have a friend who I can uh, ask recommendations uh, from. Yeah, same. I, I have a friend. Well, you, you know CJ, right, uh, Rob? He was one of yeah. my men at my wedding. Yeah, he's a huge Eagles fan. So I can just ask him, hey, do you have any recommendations for places we can go to Philadelphia for? And uh, I'm sure he'll hook me up with something. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, yeah, no you know, doubt. I will say, though, for uh, Cincinnati, the thing I'm most looking to, I'm looking forward to the most outside of the Bengals game is the possibility of going to either a Columbus Blue Jackets game or the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm. The Rock Hall is a lot of fun. I've been there. And that's in Cleveland. Yep. They yeah, actually just is... announced the uh, finalists, or not the finalists, the uh, inductees for this year. Who yeah. is? The Rock Hall. Mm. Yeah, Rock Hall's a lot of fun. I went there, it's been, last time I went there was actually, it was in 2010, because it was right before I had my neck surgery that year, so so I was there summer of 2010, I went there and uh, spent like easily a good like three, four hours in there. So that was a lot of fun to do that. Then um, several years later, I went to the um, NFL Hall of Fame for the first time in Canton, which that was a lot of fun to go to and, and see that. I want to say, I think that was around like 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. So, Who at the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a couple summers ago, <clears throat> you and I went to the Hockey Hall of Fame. 
Yeah, we did that when you were up here um, for the Bills Bengals home opener. Uh, 92 degrees out on the damn field. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Rob, have you ever, Rob, have you ever been to the Hockey Hall of Fame? Uh, unfortunately not. Dude, go. Don't yeah, even I would have love to, though. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun time. I was going to say, if you ever end up um, up here in my neck of the woods, just uh, make sure you got your passport or something, and you know we'll go over. It's only like an hour and a half for me. I got to get myself a passport still. Yeah. I mean, Embarrassingly I enough, I never had one. Yeah. No, that's all good. I, I don't have one either. I just have the enhanced license because I'm only like 20 minutes from the border, and that's fine, but it's one of those well, where you know, it's easy to get across. Well, the nice thing about the trip, too, is that we're not gonna need the, you know, we're not gonna need the necessity to fly like we did in Kansas City. Like we had to fly to Kansas City to mm -hmm. to achieve our goal. And then in 2024, Brent and I already were talking about this. I think a night or two ago, mm -hmm. and she said, regardless what happens in 2024, no matter what month of the year it throws in, we're going to Seattle. Now oh, that awesome. would be a fun city to go to, and that's actually one of the stadiums I want to visit. Me too. I agree. That's like in my I top. I'd also go there for retro game hunting. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they have a lot of good shops in the uh, Seattle area. Well, if you, wait, so you've been to Seattle? No, I just know from uh, YouTubers and whatnot. Well, would you be interested in 2024 to go with us? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, we do. But you're part of the family. You might as well just, you know, join us. Hell, I'd even get a game to watch. A, I'd even get tickets to watch a Kraken out there if they're playing at that time. I would love yeah, to see even, that, that building. You know what? I would love that as well. Yeah. <laughs> the little crackheads that are roaming around. Yeah, the uh, the rink that's like underground. <laughs> so, yeah. Like literally, you go from the street level, you go underground to get into the rink. I think the same thing's going to be said for the new Titan Stadium. Oh, yeah, I, I forgot. Oh, yeah, that's yeah right. they voted that. One. Yeah, good job, Nashville. Your public tax dollars are only paying $2.4 billion for it, being 100% publicly funded. Well, to be fair, if it's a if it's below ground, that's not too bad, honestly. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, the current Bill Stadium is like fifty feet below ground for the field, so. Yeah. So the new one won't be. The new one's gonna be like way taller. <laughs> like the yeah. field's gonna be at actual street level. Yeah, for the most part. But I will say this though, and that is, is that I'm looking forward to a lot of these uh, opportunities that are going to be coming our way in the next couple of years. Like, here's what I know for a fact: this year, obviously, we're going to Cincinnati or Philadelphia, regardless, unless it falls on like a holiday or whatever. Um, 2024, we're definitely going to Seattle, but also Indianapolis and Houston are also on that list as well. So if we yeah. can, if, if we're able to manage a three-way trip to those three cities, that will really benefit all of us. Mm -hmm. But in 2025, I found out that the Bills are on the road against the Panthers and the Falcons. Ooh. Yeah, I oh, found wow. that out. And when I saw that, I'm like, we definitely got to bring Adam to the to the Panthers trip because he's a big Panther fan. So, right. and he and I think and I assure you, he would love to come down. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Hell, we're trying to get him to come on this trip to Cincinnati or Philadelphia. That'd be awesome if he does. Right? Yeah, dude. Only thing I is, mean, he'd have to fly in. I mean, the rest of us can can drive in, but. Well, technically, you can fly in too, Tom. But with you and your truck, yeah. Yeah, you, you I mean, I'm not that. I mean, it's only like a seven hour ride. I can easily do that. Yeah, I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, when Brent and I drove a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, when we went to Tennessee, that was a 10 hour, or yeah, that was a 13 hour drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like that when I drove from Buffalo to Knoxville back in uh, in 2019, uh, right before, it was only like about a month and a half before I came down to, actually, no, it was a month and a half after I went to see you in New York City, because um, cause I had come down there in April of 2019, and then like a month and a half later, I went to my friend's wedding in Knoxville, and that was about a 14-hour ride straight through. Damn. So... Yeah, and I'm glad I wasn't stuck on the other way going back through on, like, that um, I-81 because that was all jacked up with construction and everything. Yeah. So, Rob, further in advance, don't do anything nuts for the fall because we're going on the trip. Yes, yeah, sounds great. As of right now, nothing. If there are any conventions I'm going to, it would be in the summer anyway, so. 
Yeah, or if you have a camping trip or whatever, do it in the summer. But in the fall, that's when we're going to be all jamming our shit and going to our next, you know, trip. But I would really love is to also, and I'm just speaking out loud here, is I'm hoping that <clears throat> when we go to one of the two cities, if it lands in September or early October, I would love to go to the Cincinnati Zoo or the Philadelphia Zoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if we, if it's Cincinnati, we could always even go down to that distillery down in Lexington. Yeah, that's in Kentucky, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we go to Cincinnati, we'll just stay on the Kentucky side. I mean, it's like less than an hour and a half from the distillery. Well, so maybe we'll just we walk right over to the stadium, too. You know what Rob should do? Like, if it's in, if we're going to Cincinnati, we should definitely carpool together, Rob. Oh, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. So that means you would have to come in from New Jersey to Long Island because I think it's further out from Jersey to Ohio. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, or you could just pick him up on the way, even. <laughs> if you're coming from Long Island, uh, you know, well, just, just pick him up in Jersey. Well, if he's well, I would definitely do that if it's going to Philly, if we're going to Philadelphia, oh, right? Because because if we're going to Philadelphia, we can easily pick up Rob because he's right there, oh, and yeah. we can just grab him mm -hmm. for five days, abduct him from his home, and then bring him to Philly <laughs> for a couple of days. Right. My parents would be like, "Oh, you're going on a road trip? Great, have fun." Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the fun part will be is like if we're good, if, get out of the house. Yeah. Fun part will be if um, whichever city we go to is like picking up Adam from the airport if he joins us. <laughs> well, that would be great. But I don't know. I mean, if he comes, that would be awesome. But if he doesn't, then oh well. Then it would just be mm -hmm. the four of us. Yeah. And I think that's enough people, honestly. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's a good size. Yeah. I think, and if I'm being honest, I think we could pull off both, honestly. I think we could do it. We will see. We'll see what happens with it. But gotta start saving. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank God my bonus comes up next month. <laughs> but, but um, no. Actually, looking up like the best cheesesteaks in Philly, uh, it looks like uh, Delisandro's, uh, Max's. Those are like the top two, and apparently Tony Luke's is up there also. Delisandro's oh, does sound familiar. Yeah, and a lot of people, of course, anyone that's ever gone to Philly, that everyone knows Gino's and Pat's are the tourist trap. <laughs> Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. So, it's like that here in Buffalo. Anchor Bar and Duff's are the two tourist traps. It's like, you don't get that good of a wing anyways, at least in my opinion. I don't think it's as good, and you're paying way too much for it. So, you're better off going to one of the um, one of the other places where it's like one of those hole-in-the-ground um, spots that you can really get some cool stuff at. And uh, and I would say if, um, and actually, uh, Bobby, I didn't, well, I took you to Imperial when you were up here um, the last time, which I know that... I know we all enjoyed that. There was that was some really good wings and pizza over there. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, and then I took Rob the Super Fry, and mm -hmm. he had yep. a freaking blast over there. Yep, I've been there. <laughs> yep, because he oh, took I, me I there when eat. I was down there. Yeah, I want to have a sashimi again. That was too good. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, I plowed down that. <laughs> that and the well, soup. <laughs> yeah, the sashimi is the best. Oh, I I like. I remember you were watching me. I like freaking demolished that sandwich. <laughs> and that was like yeah. the day I flew in from J flew in the JFK. And I was like, "Hey, come on over. Let's go get." Some like literally, I think what it was. I know you and um, Brett went to the gym, and then you're like, "It was like relax for a couple hours." And I like passed out for like an hour and a half, and then you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm on the way." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> it's all good." So and I was like, "On the land, on the land, the land, you know." Yeah. yeah. Although that was that was funny because I was like, thank God I was able to get my hotel room early that morning because I I actually flew out of here. I want to say it was like uh, I think it was like six forty five in the morning. And I landed at JFK like an hour an hour and fifteen later or something. Hell yeah! So, and plus, if we if we do tend to go to a Columbus Blue Jackets game or a Philadelphia Flyers game or both, this would be arenas number eight and nine for me for the NHL. I mean, I've been to I've been inside at least seven of them. But eight and nine would be like a really good number for me personally. Because mm -hmm. I've been to obviously I've seen the Islanders, I've seen the Devils, I've seen the Sabres, I've seen the Bruins, and I've seen the Leafs. And I went outside of the Hurricanes, the Predators, and the Blues. Mm -hmm. But I don't count them unless I'm inside the building. Yeah, well, it's like that for me too. I mean, I've actually, of course, besides here in Buffalo, I mean, I've um, been to, of course, the old barn mm -hmm. uh, when when we went together in 2019. Uh, I've also been to um, the old Mellon Arena so that in Pittsburgh. I've been to the new PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh. So that's literally like arenas 
like three and four and then um the other one i would count it well it wasn't for an nhl game but i've been to the american airline center in dallas so that would be arena five and nice. then we were and we were outside um the enterprise center in st louis when we were down there in uh, october yeah that sounds about right rob where, where have you been to um obviously uh the old devil's arena I uh, can cross off Madison Square Garden off my list. I uh, have been to uh, Nassau Coliseum. That was many years ago, though. And you went to UBS not too long ago. Yep. And you then still have I... a pin? Yes. Yes, I do. Hell yeah. I'm, there you go. I'm trying to get, like, a board or something to put all my pins on so I can display them nicely. Oh, you mean, like, stealing my idea about putting the... Uh... The cork map in my my apartment with all the pins from all the NFL stadiums I went to. Yeah, mine wouldn't be like a map, but because I just like collect pins in general. But yeah, I was actually talking to Brett about the pins, and I'm like, well, when we go to the Pro Football Hall of Fame at some point, which for this trip, when we go to Cincinnati, that's going to be very highly we're going. But mm -hmm. I told her, I'm like, do you want me to put the Hall of Fame uh, pin in the map, or do you want to put it someplace else? And she's like. Well, we want to put all the stadiums we went to with, you know, the map. So we'll put the Hall of Fame pin in, like, a lanyard. Yeah, that makes, that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, because you already know how that looks like. I mean, Tom has never mm -hmm. seen the board. That I know for a fact. Tom has never seen the board in person. Yeah, not in person. <laughs> no, but, <clears throat> but when you do come down to Long Island at some point in the future, hopefully... You'll, I'll definitely show you the board because that's uh, that's one of our most prized possessions as of now. And ever since that Kansas City trip, we were so inspired to go to like every NFL stadium. So we've already I've already seen five teams. So if you count out the Bengals and Eagles, that's seven right there. All right. So random question for you. If I, so, let's say so. I've been to like five different arenas now. Um, should I count MSG as number six because technically we walked through it when we were in Penn Station? Um, well, we went, we walked through the garden, but we did not go inside the arena. So I would say no. Probably kind of uh, like, kind of like St. Louis in a sense where, yeah, we've seen it, but. <laughs> yeah, or like in my case, I, I was outside of St. Louis and I was outside of uh, Nashville or even Bush Stadium for the Cardinals. So I'm just like, well, that's pretty dope. That we got to see that. Same with wherever the Bisons play in Buffalo. Yeah, so. yeah, Coca-Cola Field, or no, Salem's Field now. But yeah, I mean, and actually I forgot too, you mentioned Nashville. Um, I've been been outside of that arena several times. I've never been in it. But <clears throat> my, uncle's, my uncle lives down there. One of my uncles has season tickets for, he's had like season tickets for Predators like ever since I can remember. Yeah, oh, and, cool. and I've been outside of, uh, I've been uh, outside the Hurricane Stadium in Raleigh. And I've been outside of PNC Arena in Raleigh, and um, I didn't go inside. But the only reason I was there was because on our way back from Nashville a couple of years ago, Brittany's best friend and her fiance live outside of Raleigh, so we were able to spend some, a couple of days in North Carolina. Nice. So that's. I have why. been outside of Emily Arena as well, but not the inside. Yeah, yeah so I was outside of there actually when I was uh, when I had my neck surgery in Tampa. Now I think about it, but. But um, went past that, and yeah, I mean, I will say I was still kind of like drugged out when it happened because I was still coming out of it, <laughs> like waking up fully. But it was like right after. But I do remember going by it, and then of course, let's see, we were outside of Bush Stadium. We were outside of Bush Stadium. Um, nice. You've been to City Field, I know that. Um, mm -hmm. I was just on the outside of City Field because uh, Numbnuts took me there when <laughs> when I was down there last time. <laughs> and and then actually when I was in Texas, I've been outside of uh, Jerry World and uh, the old uh, Globe Life Field or old Globe Life Stadium. So just driving by that, but yeah, Dallas is one of my top destinations. So I would say Dallas, Green Bay, Seattle. Uh, Denver is on my list, and I want to say Carolina is on that list that I want to go mm -hmm. see really bad. Yeah. I also would not count out Houston or Indianapolis. One might see either of those. I mean, if it's Indy, I mean, God, let's uh, we should get our old friend Trevor in, in on that one because I know he would absolutely love to go see the Colts. I don't know if he's seen the Colts in person. I know he's seen them in in Buffalo. He's that I know. Yeah, he's been at, he's been at Lucas Oil before. He has? I don't remember asking him. Yeah, that. I think at least once. Huh. 
Interesting. I didn't. I didn't even think about that. To be yeah. honest with you. Well, I know he loves the Houston Astros too, which we've talked oh, yeah. about that on this show before. <laughs> oh yeah, and I bust his balls about it. Yep. Yep. So it is what wow. it is. But <laughs> anyways, so yeah, we'll of course keep you filled in on the trip and uh, let you know what we all decide. But with that being said, we've already gone a quick hour, and uh, Bobby's face is still like fast. multiple shades of purple <laughs> from <laughs> from the first half. Well, I'm starting to turn red, which is a good sign, and then I'm turning pink slowly. So I'm starting to reclaim my my thoughts. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, were really purplish you. red when you uh, had it. Oh yeah, that first like 45 minutes of you, it's like, yeah, that was literally like hell on earth. <laughs> Yeah, that was fucking atrocious, dude. <laughs> well, I guess. All right, here's my final question for you. Did it actually taste good? Yeah, of course. I okay. mean, the taste is there, that's for sure. But the spice kicked my ass. <laughs> it was glorious to watch. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Especially, like, you, like, five minutes in, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> well, yeah, because I didn't expect it to be like that. I mean, I kind of figured, oh, yeah, it's not going to be mild. I knew that. And I knew mm -hmm. it was going to be top notch. And you're like, ah, just shove your face with bread. You'll be fine. It, well, trust me, you'll thank me for that later because it won't totally wreak havoc on your stomach as bad. Oh, no, I don't, I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm just saying it's like, uh, like yeah, I, I can see why you asked me to do that. Yep, yep. So, yeah, it helps kind of shield some of the effect of, <laughs> of uh, the heat. So, <laughs> not all of it, but at least it'll make it a little bit easier. At least some of it, I mean. Yeah. But yeah, I've never I've never seen your face turn that red, even with that hot sauce stuff. <laughs> that that is not true. You've seen me burn my face on Thanksgiving or Christmas. Well, yeah, with the hot sauce, but this was like a whole different level. <laughs> well, what did you expect me to do? You know, yeah, extended heat. <laughs> so, Fuck. so, but with that being said, um, you know, we'll wrap it up. So, so of course, for these two, thanks for joining us as usual. We appreciate that. Take care of yourselves and each other. We'll see you next time around.